Hi guys, my name is See You Later, and we're going to start a new uh, game, uh, Let's Play series, and I was thinking that uh, one of the games that I loved for a long time, and I've never did a YouTube video on it, and I'd really like to uh, try it out, is uh, Skyrim, and we're going to be playing uh, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition modded. And I've got a little bit of a different take on how to play Skyrim, uh, modded Skyrim, than a lot of people do. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people who roleplay his Skyrim. But uh, I've got a, just a, you know, I've got my own kind of unique way that I like to play. And I thought people might like to see that. And uh, I thought I'd like to share it with you. I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, and it's a different game. I'm normally doing uh, uh, Minecraft videos, but I think I'd like to expand the channel out and do a few different uh, games, more games that I like to play. Um, and so I think the first, this first episode is going to be kind of like an introductory. I'm going to try to make it really short. But what I'd like to do is I want to show you uh, a little bit, walk you through a little bit about the mods that I'm using. Um, I'm this game uh, currently I'm running over 200 mods and uh, they're all there for role play and immersion and graphics and combat and uh, I do have a couple of what I guess you would consider like cheaty mods but I'll talk about those and I'll show you how I use them to make my uh, personal game playing experience a lot better experience uh and it also basically makes it so that skyrim is an never-ending uh infinitely replayable landscape uh depending on how you roll and when i say roll i i'm either using uh like D, D style tabletop gaming dice or uh, i have an app on my phone that i like to use uh, I'll tell you the name of the app. Uh, give me just a second. It's called Dice X. Uh, it's on iPhone, iOS. I think they have it for Android too. But there's hundreds of different dice rolling apps out there. This one's just very simple and quick. If I want to roll a D100, I just click one button. And I just rolled a 12. So it makes things really easy. Uh, I can do a D20 roll to make a decision on if something is uh, successful or not successful. I uh, just rolled an 11. So it's really simple, really easy. And I'll show you kind of how I incorporate that into my uh, Skyrim gameplay. So just for the introductory here, uh, I'm going to show you uh, starting out a new game using a mod called Skyrim Unbound. Now Skyrim Unbound is an alternate start mod. And for years I've played with alternate start Live Another Life. But this one gives you a lot more controls. Now, don't pay any attention to this. Uh, this is just notifications about some other mods that I have. And it's letting me know that they're getting set up uh, for the new game. So here we go, guys. We're starting a brand new game of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Uh, you can hear my stomach growling there. I'm already getting hungry because I've got eye needs uh, on there. And... Uh, here we are. This is the opening sequence for Skyrim Unbound. Now, up in the upper left corner of the screen, you can see all of these things that are going to be flooding down here in the beginning of the game. Now, because we haven't actually entered into the land of Skyrim yet, we're kind of in what I like to call a mod configuration uh, holding pattern right now. And this is really cool because it gives you a chance to just sit here for a while and wait for all these menus up here in the upper, upper left-hand corner to finish uh, doing what they need to do. There it says MCM registered 19 new menus. It's not done yet. There are some that will still not be configured until after we start going through the MCM. So for setting this up, I, uh, I will do... Uh, uh, I'll show you what I'll do, which is I'll open up the MCM, I'll set everything to the defaults that the way that I want them for every new game start going from now on. So every time I start a new game, I won't have to go through this process again. I'll just load up my save game that I'll call like a RPG new game start or something like that or RPG new game. And when you do that, you can start a new character 
instantly. Like you, you, you just load the save. You'll be in this room. You'll open up the Skyrim Unbound, pick all your options, and go. It, it's that simple. And you won't have to wait for all of these MCM menus and uh, things to load from your mods again and again and again. So, uh, yeah, it's a really cool way of... Uh, see, there's two more menus that came up. So it's a really cool way of getting established. All right, so I'm not going to make you wait through all of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up. I just hit escape and then I'm coming down here to mod configuration. And here you can see some of the mods uh, that have an MCM menu that I have loaded. Uh, I'm just going through and it looks like we're almost there. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and finish this up getting all of my defaults set and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll explain uh, what I did. So this is all like you should be familiar with your mods and make your own decisions about how you want your defaults. But the main one that we're going to take a look at is going to be Skyrim Unbound, which is this uh, menu right here. We'll go through the core settings, uh, spells, starting locations, and the special options. And then that'll be that for this video. And then uh, at the end of this video, I think what we'll do is, is I'll show you a character that I just built using the same system and then that'll be the character uh, that we will start off with with our let's play uh, alright guys so I will be right back let me go ahead and go through some more of these uh, and get them set up and then we'll be right back Alright guys, we're back and I'm here at the main menu again because I went ahead and set up all my defaults and then I created a save game uh, and then what I did was I, I just made sure everything was ready to go and then I did a console save, if, which you can do easily if you're on PC. Uh, the way you do that is you just uh, hit your tilde key and you can see there, you just type the word save space and then whatever you would like to call the save game i believe you can use quotes and it'll allow you to use spaces uh i just didn't do that i just used underscores don't make this rpg space new like for instance without any quotes or anything because it'll ignore or cause an error with the other uh words here uh if it works at all it'll just be ended up calling it uh rpg only uh or just rpg so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just I've exited out to check that save game to make sure that it came up properly, and then I'm going to go ahead and reload it, and then I'll go through here the uh, MCM menu and show you what we did. Uh, it's going to vary based on what your mods are that you have set up uh, for yourself, but I go into the mod configuration and and I just went through each one of the mods. So here's a matter of time. I went through the display, I adjusted to what I want to see and the positioning of it. Uh, then I went through uh, auto harvest I have turned off. I'm not going to be using that uh, for this character. Um, campfire, uh, dynamic things, gist soul trap, which helps prevent you from putting small souls in large gems. Uh, Hearthcraft, which we're going to be using to do some uh, home building and home decorating along with the campfire mod i won't be using frostfall uh, i know that's a very immersive mod but i try to balance in between uh what you would say realism and annoying so i want somewhere in the middle between realism and annoying i believe that the center of balance between realism and annoying is called fun and that's how i try to make the decisions on how realistic or how annoying I want uh, things to be. And for me, Frostfall is fun in the beginning for a while, and then it just becomes super annoying. Every time you try to get somewhere, you end up dying because you froze to death. Uh, so some people like that. Some people, that's a part of the game that they're playing, that, that, that's, that they're playing Frostfall. And that's totally okay. You're, you can do that if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to. Hunterborn works with hunting in Skyrim. They very synergistic two mods that work together. Uh, there's even with the Hunterborn MCM enable the hunting in Skyrim compatibility and uh, textures from hunting in Skyrim, which are awesome. So you'll see uh, skinned animals and things like that, uh, skinned carcasses. Uh, we've got 
follower tweaks, uh, immersive AFT, uh, immersive armors, immersive uh, winches, which uh, places extra uh, servant uh, ladies into the different um, uh, places. I will show you the I need. Uh, one of the things that I do on the I need is I half the amount of hunger, thirst, and sleep that are required. Uh, the default is four, so I set them at two. And then in addition to that, I also set the game's time scale through this mod because this is the best way that I've found to control the uh, time scale of the game. And I set it to the lowest setting that it allows you, which is eight. And I believe that's one of the lowest uh, safe settings that will not cause problems with save games and uh, break quests and things like that. Uh, you cannot do Skyrim one to one. It it, uh, it breaks things. We've got again for the home building and the uh, decorating. We've got Jackson's positioner, which is about you know a 90% uh, totally functional version of this, which was a port from Old Rim. Um, the only thing it can't do right now is anything that you would have before needed to select using the console to to select something. It, it doesn't have that functionality, so you, you'll only be able to select things you can select uh, in the game, which is a lot of items anyway, so it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Uh, love Jackson's Renamer. I can rename mundane items, horses, NPCs, people, my son, whatever. Uh, lazy item edit for either buffing or debuffing certain weapons. Let's say you really, really, really like the uh, steel sword. That's, that's your character's thing, but at level 30, that steel sword is not going to do it for you, even if it's, uh, you know, a legendary, um, uh, if, especially if you're not going to put any enchantments on it. Uh, so lazy item edit is pretty cool. You can equip the weapon, and then you can uh, directly alter the stats for that weapon in-game. Uh, works really well with the renamer. Say, for instance, your character has a family sword that's been in the family for generations, Okay, it probably shouldn't have the same stats as a wooden sword. You know what I mean? So, uh, try to use this along with the Give Myself Any Items uh, mod uh, to help set up characters and help uh, maintain balance. Uh, you Can you use this to make a super OP god weapon that'll one-shot Alduin? Yes, you can. Uh, am I going to do that? No, I'm not. Um, we've got Legend of the Dragonborn, but I'm not playing as Dragonborn, so I'm not sure if this is something that I'll check out with this character. Uh, Morhud, or Ordinator, uh, picking up books. I love being able to pick up skill books without reading them, so that I can choose to uh, use them later if I want to. Uh, Predator Vision, Simply Knock, super cool, super immersive mod. If I knock on a door that's locked, if there's somebody in there, they, there's a, a roll-off, a random chance, based on certain things on whether they'll let me in or not. Um, unique treasures, uh, summer mist enchants. Take notes. Take notes is going to be a really cool mod for this character, especially. Uh, lets you write things down that you want to remember in-game, immersively. Uh, it's really cool. It's really cool. I can't wait to show it to you guys if you haven't seen it already. We're going to be using violins for uh, kill moves, and we're going to be using wildcat for combat. I've already set up damage. We're going to be playing on legendary difficulty. However, our legendary difficulty means that we do double damage and the NPCs do double damage, so we're equally as lethal. And uh, in the early game, uh, I think that makes it... Uh, pretty difficult you got to think about what you're going to do if you jump into a middle of a bunch of bandits you're going to get killed uh so it's like better that you don't do that uh then we've got wearable lanterns which is an awesome mod a uh, very cool way of avoiding having to carry torches everywhere and uh, especially with our weather mods and things we have uh, lighting mods as well to make things a little bit darker dungeons are a little bit darker i hope they come up okay on youtube i'm not real sure how that's going to work out but we'll check it out. And uh, we also have the wet and cold. Uh, wet and cold is amazing for immersion. If I get out of the water, if it rains on me, uh, uh, I've got, uh, I, along with this, it's not, a, not an MCM, but in the game as well, I also have the footprints mod, which I really think is one of the coolest, uh, just simple immersion mods uh, ever. 
Uh, and that does it for MCM. Uh, now, you might have noticed that I skipped right over the uh, the uh, Skyrim Unbound. And that's because I'm saving the best for last. So, what we're going to do here... I need to reopen it because uh, some other configurations did some things. So, we'll just go down here to Skyrim Unbound. wrong button okay and now the character that I'm going to show you in just a minute I want to explain to you I, I did a live stream I actually did a live stream on twitch while I was trying this out and that's how we came up with the character so uh, under the uh, under the character name we went through and there's actually 51 if you count adventurer and since adventurer is uh, the default uh, one I chose not to count it and what we did was we rolled a D 100 and divided by 2 so whatever the answer was uh, was what we decided to go with and I ended up getting uh, 34 so if you count down here 34 it says blacksmith so the character's name starting out in the game is blacksmith and we went through a whole thing about uh, you know, how should a blacksmith character play? He's not going to really be much of a fighter, I think, unless something happens that makes him want to have to fight. Uh, so he's going to be more of a craftsman. He's going to be more of a, uh, well, he's going to be a blacksmith, but we decided he's going to be a traveling merchant whose ultimate goal in life is to, one, become a master blacksmith and arm all of the warriors of uh, Tamriel with his, the finest uh, weapons and armor, especially uh, with the backstory, he is coming to Skyrim to start out his career as a blacksmith. Uh, he just finished his apprenticeship. Uh, he was living in Ceredil under the apprenticeship of you know some blacksmith master, and because of the war that's going on in Skyrim, he's coming to Skyrim uh to take advantage of that he wants to make money off of this war by uh selling weapons and armor so we've got a couple of mods uh, to help out with that we've got the uh, dovakin's wagon or dovakin's cart and that's a really cool immersive uh kind of like player home that you have to kind of build out but you when you pack it all up it's a wagon and you hook it to your horse and you can drag it wherever you want to and carry your home uh, with you so we're going to be testing that mod out and along with that we want to be able to sell the things that we make to the people in all of the uh, war camps so we're going to we're going to try to go to the different war camps and sell goods to directly to the warriors that are going to be going off to war and the mod that we're going to be using to do that is called uh, your market stall so you got your very own market stall you can craft them place them down put items in a chest and when you sit in the chair to activate the shop literally npcs in the area will start to come over and deal with you it has a leveling system with reputation it's very cool i like the role play aspect of being a merchant and that's how we make money we we actually have to make stuff and then sell it to people and uh, and that way you don't have to just sell items to other armorers and other merchants. We can do that still, and I do plan on doing that. But one of the main goals of this character is he's going to um, he's going to be selling direct to soldiers. Uh, that's what he's going to attempt to do. Whether we, he will be successful at that or not, we don't know. And then a further goal of his is. To do that and he would like to use the money to set himself up to be prepared to start his own family uh, he was an apprentice from a very young age uh, he didn't know who his family was and he wants to start his own family so that he can be a father to the children that he never had like the the father that he never had he can be like that for his own children so he will be looking for uh, a sweetheart We'll be looking for a place to live, to permanently settle down. Uh, if we do settle down, we can build our own house or we can buy a house. 
Uh, and if we do that, we can actually set up our own business. If we find a good location, uh, we can actually set up our house as a shop slash house and uh, have our very own blacksmithing operation. Now, there is another mod on the Nexus that uh, allows you to set up a smithy uh, and sell goods at an actual blacksmith shop somewhere near Whiterun, I believe it is. Uh, and I'm, I don't have that mod, but I wasn't thinking of this character uh, at the time when we did the random rolling for the backstory. Uh, so I'll, I might go and get that other mod and check it out at least to see if it's something in the mid game that, uh, our young adventurer here, uh, blacksmith's, uh, journeyman, um, there's something that he might want to do. Uh, he's chosen the warrior stone, uh, as his standing stone to start off with. And that's going to be so that he can get started on leveling his uh, smithing skill. And then we, on for spells, we chose nothing. I don't want this guy to be using any magic at all. He will not be a dragonborn. He will not be dealing with dragons until possibly later on. But he will not be using dragon shouts. And then for the outfit, we kind of went through and we picked... Um, because he's a traveling merchant, I figure he's going to be somewhat of a survivalist. He's got to be able to chop wood. He's got to be able to hunt. So we decided that for armor, since he is an armorer himself, we're going to start him off with some heavy armor. But as soon as we have the opportunity, I'm going to put him in a blacksmith's outfit. And that's what he's going to live in for the most of the time. And then for the uh, headgear, I just picked something random and i think we spawned us with nothing which is perfectly fine for weapons longbow and axe uh we went with for the uh survivalist and hunter aspect uh i'm going to be using that hunter uh hunting uh, uh mod as well so it's going to be really cool to use that together uh he doesn't have a sword or a dagger or anything like that just yet so He's going to have to either make one or go and, or go and find one uh, somewhere. And then we set the wealth to uh, random because I figured either he came with some money or no money or a lot of money. It really doesn't matter because our, our purpose is we want to make a lot of money so that we can afford to buy the supplies that we need to build a home, to build a business and to uh and to survive uh, especially in this early game it's going to be kind of harsh uh we've got uh, uh heightened damage from uh animals and things like that and we are going to be hunting he's going to need lots of leather he's going to need uh um animal bones and animal fat uh to do crafting and to make leather so the uh the animal hides there's a leveling system with the hunting He's going to start out really crappy, and he's not going to do very well, uh, and he'll have to work his way up. So I'm looking forward to a very interesting playthrough. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be no magic. Starting location was completely random. Uh, we're doing a, you know, a roleplay D&D style random rolling dice thing, and this already came with random. I did choose uh, to start him in the dawn, however, uh, in the morning, so which is fine. And then for the special options, uh, I did not. I, I left, I believe, most of this all as uh, default, with exception of faction armor. So, but we didn't choose anything random uh, for the armor. We chose the heavy armor. Uh, but I did say allow faction armor. It didn't proc. It didn't have any effect on our character, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, we're not unlocking shouts, and we're not going to be a vampire or a werewolf starting out. I can't tell you what might happen later on, but for the time being, we're just a regular old, uh, regular old person. So I've already loaded that up, and, and when you're done picking all your options, all you have to do is go to um, this first option, which is begin your adventure, and immediately you will be sent to a uh, character creation menu. You can work on your character. 
from there and then you will spawn somewhere randomly in the world so let's go ahead and take a look at our new character all right guys so here we are here is our new character he is the blacksmith journeyman his name is and i'll go ahead and open up the uh, skills menu here his name is arturius torinus he is an imperial and this character is a pure level one what do i mean by pure level one if we take a look around the uh skill trees here you'll see he is a level zero he's actually a level zero character uh or i, I call it a pure level one he has no extra skills leveled in anything at all so this is a starting character and this is a good place to start if you wanted to build like a base character say make him a nord or something and leave the name as a adventurer and do that you could even skip the character creation make a new save game and have yourself a default character that which you can then go into the character creation menu by uh, console command show race menu and uh, build out a character from there. Then you can completely skip all of the options uh, for the uh, random start. However, that's going to start you in the same location every time. And as you guys might notice, I, I actually haven't moved the character at all. He's, well, I believe, if we were to check the. Uh, uh, where are the statistics? Uh, in. Oh, yeah, up here. Stats. Uh, we've discovered only the location where we were spawned in and I think does it tell you like how far you've walked I'm not sure I thought that was something stores trains, skill books hours slept hours waiting so we're we're I just wanted to show you this he's a real zero level character however we got lucky on the uh, on the gold. If I take a look at the inventory here, we got lucky in that we start off with 2,393 gold. Now, some of you may say, "Oh, well, what? That's that's really OP to start off with that much money." Um, is it for this character? This character has been an apprentice in Cyrodiil, apprentice back blacksmith for years. He's saved up his money to come to Skyrim to start his blacksmithing career. And I think that's a very reasonable amount of uh, septums for uh, to have starting off. Let's take a look at what we were gifted for our starting items. Uh, for our weapons, we have an iron war axe, and then we have a longbow. I'm not sure if the war axe works with the uh, tree chopping and stuff like that, but that'd be really cool if it did. Uh, because it, we could use it as a tool and a weapon. We've got a longbow, uh, damage of 5, and we've got 25 iron arrows. I think that's pretty reasonable for a uh, uh, woodsman slash traveling merchant. Uh, we chose the heavy armor option because he's a blacksmith. We were thinking that he probably had a set of armor to bring with him to use as a, a samples or you know something like that. Uh, he's wearing them right now which I'm okay with because we didn't set up anything for him for clothing or anything like that. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in just a little bit. Uh, we've got a couple of healing potions and we've got potions of magicka. However, we're not going to be using them at all. We're not going to be using magic with this character at all. And uh, But we may uh, use a, a potions, of course. We have to have some way of uh, healing, especially if we're in combat. Uh, so alchemy is is most likely going to be a thing especially since he's a traveler and and a woodsman so he's he's well versed as a survivalist uh, and he'll be familiar with a lot of the flowers and other ingredients that can be found around and uh, even if he doesn't know about them in the beginning he doesn't mind experimenting uh, we have been given a horker loaf times three Three vegetable soups and uh, two bottles of wine and we should have if I look over here uh, those are just some stuff for the mod added items I'll, I'll store those away later we should have yes a water skin this is very important 
uh, for our um, eye needs. And then we've got a torch, four lock picks, and then from the uh, mods again, here's the auto storage fish. And then here is the add item menu SE pack. And we are going to use that. And when, we, when you use that, it opens like a container. And you're going to be able to remove items from this container and they'll go into your inventory. There is an add item menu search item. So you can see the items look like these Dwemer uh, doohickeys. There is the, uh, other, the other item. There's two items. And then there's the search and the add item spell tomes. We are not going to be using magic. Therefore, we will not be using the spell tomes. So as you can see, I didn't take them out of that um, uh, container. So now, if I go back into my items again, you'll see there's the... Okay, so I'll just store that away. But there's the search, and then there's the menu. So the way we can use this is, if I, if I just use the item, I can type in black... Smith and then hit enter and everything in this game that has the word blacksmith in it will come up here so we have two different blacksmith aprons and uh, I'm going to give him both of those there's one and there's one uh, we've got this house part, which is a blacksmith's forge. Uh, that's something from Hearthcraft, and we'll we'll get one of those later uh, when we figure out where we're going to set up our our smithy, uh, the more permanent one. But that's how we're going to do it. We, you can actually I can build uh, all of these things in game immersively in game uh, without having to add more mods or use uh, you know uh, modder built player homes. All right, now, um, the other thing that we're going to give him are the blacksmith shoes, okay? And a decision that I made a long time ago, that's it. So, we're, and I think, I hope to you that it makes sense why we're giving him these items, uh, because we're building up a character, and I want this character to have uh, specific uh, items uh, at his disposal. So what we're going to do in the beginning is he's going to have a blacksmith apron and he's going to have blacksmith shoes. And what we're going to do is we are going to go into our MCM and these are clothing items normally. These are clothing items normally. So what I'm going to do is go into lazy item edit, armor, and you'll be able to see what he has equipped. Okay. These are uh, the apron, iron gauntlets, and the blacksmith shoes. Um, I want to give him some gloves as well. So let me look up before we do this. I want him to get some uh, smithing gloves. So let me just go into the items again. And I'm going to go find our, our cheaty add item uh, item which is the search and I'm gonna look up glove I'm just gonna look up the word glove and we are looking for some things here that are just uh, not armored so let's see we've got these added by the divine elegance store um, they are clothed pieces as well, so they're not armored, and then there's some that are enchanted. We're not going to use those, and then what else do we have? We should have some regular gloves. Mm, let's see. Here's some more vanilla-looking gloves. These are already set up as light armor, so these are Hermos gloves, um, and then let's see, but I want to make sure... We're not too OP on our armor. So, because what I'm planning to do, if you didn't figure it out already, is his particular blacksmith outfit uh, uh, of his own is actually going to be light armor. I'm going to give him a little bit of light armor. That way, he can wear the blacksmith's clothes the majority of the time, 
when he's not in combat and then you know if something happens a random encounter and something gets sprung on him uh he'll still be able to survive so let's just give him a, a let's just give him find some vanilla gloves um <laughs> gunslinger gloves what is that i don't even know what mod adds that that's really cool looking holy cow um all right so let's see i believe these are the gloves here so we'll just pick some um do they have black ones those are kind of black ish yeah yeah that's something i think i could see a uh, blacksmith wearing so there we go. We're going to get give him this pair of gloves. And then we'll go back uh, and equip them. It's very important to use the lazy item edit that you have equipped, whatever it is that you want to. Uh. So now you can see our armor rating is zero. And then uh, you have to kind of decide. Like if we have our heavy armor on, our armor rating is 50. And I don't know if we're planning on yet uh, this guy being a light armor or heavy armor character uh i believe we said heavy armor warhammer type thing but the more i get to know this uh young man arturius um i'm actually thinking he might be a light armor kind of guy so what i'll do is um let's go ahead and we'll use the like a similar amount of of uh, armor as a light armor pieces now uh, in order to check what would be reasonable you can always go into the item search and look at stats for light armors so if we just go into the search again and look up uh, um, light we'll just look up the word light oh no that's not search item yeah that's what we were looking for and we'll look at armor here and we'll look at the class so we'll go down to light armor so all of this that has the little light brown symbol here these are all light armors and if we look at something like that you would find in the early game which would be um, I'm just trying to think real quick like imperial light armor yeah 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 something like this if you look uh here bracers seven okay seven armor rating and then if we look at let's let's look up imperial we'll filter and then we'll look at type so we'll go back let's go back up here so it, it leather armor like this imperial light armor here has an armor rating of 25 okay our guy is going to be wearing his blacksmith's cloth here with a heavy leather i'm, I'm trying to show you in the background you can't see the character uh heavy leather apron so in my rational way of thinking his leather apron will provide a similar protection as this light armor so we're going to give it that an armor rating of 25 okay and we'll increase the weight to match as well so 25 and 6 and then over here we've got some boots so our blacksmith's boots these are all 7 25 7 and 7 so it's pretty simple all of these early game imperial uh, and he is an imperial as well so he would be familiar with the techniques of this type of armor and uh, i think that's pretty legit so starting out we will go to uh, MCM lazy item edit and he will get 25 7 and 7 so he'll have an armored blacksmith's apron and the way that we do this is we switch it to light armor class okay and then once you do that you can change the armor rating here and we will put in 25 so he now has 25 armor for his uh, light armor blacksmith apron and I believe the weight for that was uh, six so let me just click here and we'll put in six so I want it to be pretty much the same as the imperial armor and then the next thing we'll do is we'll go to his uh, gloves 
the gloves weigh a half, I'm going to make them go ahead and weigh one. I think that's fair. They will be light armor. And we will make the number seven. So he'll have seven armor from his uh, blacksmith's gloves. And then for his shoes, his blacksmith's shoes, um, same, these weigh one. Let's, let's give ourselves a little bit of a penalty. Let's 1.5, I think is acceptable. They will be switched over to light armor and given a rating of seven. So 25, seven, and seven. Decked out with light armor now. So let's go out of the menu. And then we will check our inventory again here and we'll see that we are currently, it says we're still at an armor rating of zero. So perhaps I did not do that correctly. Ah, you need to re-equip it. That'll do it. So now we have an armor rating of 43. So the base 20, uh, 5, 7, and 7, we're getting some kind of a bonus already. And I'm not sure what, that's probably from our 15 level uh, skill in light armor, which we can check if we just go like this. So if I look over here at light armor, yeah, so we've got 15 in light armor starting off. And if we take a perk here, it's going to go up by 20%. So, yeah, we might end up, and, and let's take a look at our character now. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to walk down here where the, out of that grass. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm really liking this. He looks like a blacksmith, don't you think? All right, so that's our character, guys, uh, and that's our starting gear. Uh, he's got that heavy armor. He'll probably uh, use it as an heirloom or a sample and probably not sell it since it's our starting gear. And then what we'll start doing is in the next episode, we're going to start playing the game. So I'm going to, I'm going to off camera, I'm going to get a few things more uh, ready. I'll probably use some of his money to buy a horse because we're going to need to pull our horse cart. Uh, that'll be the first thing. And then the second thing, I'm going to figure out how to summon in the uh, Dovahkiin's cart so that we can have our little play home. And along with that, I may get him, uh, just to start off with, I may get him a placeable anvil that he can use with the cart so that we can start doing our blacksmithing crafting uh, right away in the next episode. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, sneak peek into how to do some uh, role playing. Arturius is definitely looking forward to giving you a good time when you come back to see. We're going to be doing some adventuring. We've got a lot of work to do. We're going to be doing a lot of crafting. We're going to be doing a lot of traveling. We're going to be doing a lot of talking about things and discussing, you know, philosophy and things like that. Um, because Arturius here, he's a pretty smart kid. He's a young guy. He's, uh, you know, as they as they say, the old saying is, he's uh, full of spit and vinegar. And he's ready to uh, he's ready to start his new life. And I hope that you'll come back and enjoy me, uh, uh, our play through. I hope that you'll come back and en enjoy uh, our playthrough of Skyrim. And I'm really looking forward to being in this beautiful place with you again. So I am. See you later. Thanks so much for watch watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in uh, seeing more of these videos. That'll let me know to keep making more. It, it encourages me. I'm see you later. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye, guys.